In this video, the chips will fly and fly and fly. And what is this all about? Just keep watching. I have this carbide insert flattening bit for the router or the CNC router and I really like that. Maybe you have already seen me using it in other videos. The manufacturer of this bit is Fraser. And I asked Fraser if they would like to send me some other of their CNC router bits and they did. Here they are and end of the video. Thanks for watching. No. The best thing is they also sent me three of their bits to give away for free. A 6mm spiral upcut with 27mm of cutting length. To enter the giveaway I've placed a few hints during the video so that you don't just watch the giveaway part and skip the rest of the video without really watching it because this one took quite a bit of time to make it. These are all solid carbide bits and they call them the Boss Beaver bits because they also have a special diamond coating on them which makes them last about three times as long as regular solid carbide bits. But one problem I have is what cut settings do I use to get the most out of the bits? Fraser provides cut settings for every bit and there are also many cut settings listed in tables online. But every time I want to try one of these it's usually too much or too aggressive for my machine. Because usually these cut settings were made with machines that are bigger, stiffer and have more powerful spindles than mine. But the spindle I have is very common in the hobby CNC world. It's the same as this one or this one or this one. Yes, I need four of them in total, because reasons. The new Crest spindles are now called AMB Electric, but it's still the same spindle and all of them have a thousand watts of power. So I would like to have cutting data for a thousand watt spindle. Now I could wait until somebody publishes exactly that or I can make cutting data myself. So let's do that. So I wrote a custom G-code program where I can very easily vary the essential parameters and the program then generates increasingly more aggressive cuts so I can make many test cuts with different cut settings and monitor the power of the spindle. I would then just go through all the cuts until the spindle is underpowered or I run into chatter. In the beginning of the program I can set the essential parameters like bit diameter, then cutting speed which later gets calculated into the RPM, but it's better to use the cutting speed because it's independent of the bit diameter. And here I also used a reference from Stepcraft, which is a CNC manufacturer who also uses the spindle. Then chip load, which later will be calculated into feed rate, but using chip load again is better because it's independent of everything else. And also by controlling the chip load, I can prevent burning of the wood or the bits because if the chip load is too low, the bit would only rub over the wood surface instead of properly cutting and if I never set this too low then it will always cut properly. Then depth of cut, number of teeth and cutting length and overlap that's just for my test piece and step over. And the step over will be gradually increased. It starts with one millimeter then goes to two, three, four until it's at a full slot of the bit diameter. Then stuff like RPM and feed rate get calculated and then the program starts. I won't go over the rest because it's not really that interesting. It's also relatively short and all that basically matters is this loop that generates all the toolpaths. But if you're interested, you can take a look at the program yourself. I've linked it in the video description. The most accurate and only device I have for measuring the wattage is this here that plugs into the wall and I plug the machine into that and it just shows me the wattage drawn. Also in my setup, I can only measure the wattage of everything and not only the spindle, but I measured that the dust collector draws 412 watts and moving an axis and the rest of the machine with a little bit of load, about 80 watts. Zoom, enhance. It's about 80 watts, so I just subtract these two values from the total and the remaining will be what the spindle uses. So now here in the control software where I'm using Eating CNC, I can just load in the program I just show you and there are the toolpaths. So let me just hit start because I'm in simulation mode and the bit will move to the start location and there the program will pause. And then I hit start again and it will do its cut. And then it will pause again and I have time to write down the value from the power meter into my chart and then hit start for the next cut. And that goes on and on and on until the program is finished or I run into chatter issues or the spindle doesn't have enough power. 
To zero my tool for this program, I manually move into the material just slightly and then take off a thin slice by manually jogging to the other side and use this position as zero. And for the height, I just use the tool length sensor on top of the material. Then the machine makes the cuts and I can monitor the power meter. Since my program generates progressively more aggressive cuts up to a full slot, I'd continue until it starts to chatter. And sometimes I also didn't stop there. This cut surface does not look good. Overall, I was surprised how quickly I ran into chatter with the 8mm bits. The 6mm bits on the other hand performed way better. That's most likely due to the spindle and the spindle mount, which I'll explain later. But it was nice to see that ships fly with the 6mm bit. As comparison, again the 8mm bit. Although at 30mm depth, it again started to chatter very quickly. But then I wanted to test the 8mm roughing bit that Fraser also sent me. At the same 30mm depth and in direct comparison it just shreds the material away. More than 6 times the material amount and even faster. This bit will definitely become a great workhorse. Just look at the chips flying. The camera also took a good look at that. Also the chips that this bit produces are very different from a usual spiral end mill. It looks like dust but these are just super tiny shavings. Okay now comes the big test for the 6mm bit. It can cut up to 27mm deep and I also have material thickness of 27mm. I'm quite pleased with this performance. And again, a nice view from the 8mm bit at its full 35mm depth with a rather light pass though. All these shots now were basically the highlights of the whole testing and that was maybe half a percent of everything I did. Took quite a lot of time doing all that, but now it's done and we can take a look at the data. The results now are many cut settings in a big spreadsheet and let me quickly go over that and demonstrate how I now can make use of that and you hopefully as well. First of all, there's this column called chatter and I used it during the test to indicate if the cut settings worked or ended with chatter. So zero is no chatter, one are the max possible settings. And these two are basically the only ones you're interested when you generate toolpaths. Two, three and four all chattered a little bit or a lot. So when I'm generating toolpaths for a part, I would only filter for the max possible settings, which is one and everything less aggressive than that will also work. Let's say for the first toolpath, I need to remove a lot of material quickly. So therefore I made this column material removal rate and let's just sort that so the biggest numbers are on top. And the bigger the number here, the more material gets removed, obviously. The top four settings are only for the 8mm roughing bit though. And let's say I only can use the 6mm bit for my part, for example. So I would filter for that. And let's also say my cut depth or my material thickness is 12mm. And filter for that. And also my cut direction is only climb cuts and filter for that. Now the list is quite a bit shorter and the cut settings that are now on top are the most aggressive I can set without running into chatter. And these would be the settings I would use. So about 18,000 RPM, 5,300-ish millimeters per minute feed rate, 12 millimeter depth of cut and a step over of two millimeters. And that's it. For another example, I just have to reset the filters, which I can do here. So now let's say I want to make a finishing pass with an 8mm bit and filter for that. Usually a higher cutting speed results in a better surface finish. So let's filter for only the higher ones. And also a lower chip load results in a better surface finish. So here I also filter for the lower ones. Then in my experience I also get better cut quality with conventional cut direction. So only filter for that. 
and let's say the cut depth is 18 millimeters. And of course also shatter only max possible settings. And now I can see at 18 millimeters depth of cut, all of these can do more than half a millimeter of step over. And half a millimeter is usually what I go for for a finishing pass. So I can use any of these settings and it will be a good result. For the last example, let's say I want to cut a full slot with a six millimeter bit. So therefore the step over is of course also six millimeters. And again, only the max possible settings. And now I can sort through the cut depth and that will tell me the maximum cut depth that's possible. In this case, five millimeters. And depending on how fast you want to go, you just need to set the matching parameters. But if it's important, I would say go a bit less deep than that. So it's less aggressive and you're on the safe side and will definitely never run into chatter. Besides that, there aren't too many interesting results I got. So if we look at the spindle power and sort that, the most power the spindle draw was about 750 watts and that even resulted in chatter. So without chatter, the maximum was 630 watts and that's far from the 1000 watts it's rated for. So for wood with the eight and six millimeter bits, it's safe to say that the spindle power doesn't matter. It's powerful enough for everything. If I plot the spindle power over the material removal rate, this is what it looks like. And it's about what I expected. It's fairly linear. And if I double the material removal rate, this about doubles the power consumption, a bit less than that. There's only one interesting part, which are these values here. They seem to not remove a lot of material, but therefore consume quite a bit of power. And that turned out to be cut settings with max RPM, quite a slow feed rate, 10 millimeter depth of cut and increasing step overs, half of them chattered. And it's pretty weird that these consumed so much power and I don't really know why that is. The high material removals all came from the roughing bit. So if I filter that out, these values should disappear. And what's also interesting, most cut settings use less than 300 watts of power. And if I filter out only the max possible settings, still most use less than 300 watts, which is pretty interesting that milling wood doesn't require a lot of power. Now to make use of this cutting data, I set up a small test. I'm going to cut a pocket into this piece here. And for roughing, I basically set the most aggressive settings I got from my test cuts. And then I make a finishing pass. Now, if you're new to CNC, this 18 millimeter thick birch plywood, would you say when you cut a pocket, yeah, let's go full depth? Probably not, but that's exactly what's gonna happen now. I'd say that's a great result. The surfaces are nice and clean. Unfortunately, I forgot to switch to a compression bit. So the top edges are a little fuzzy. But if you just sand that away, that's a perfectly cut pocket. Next, the same thing again with eight millimeter bits, but here the roughing bit for roughing and the compression bit for the finishing pass. The roughing is done and the machine waits for the tool change and we can take a look on what happened so far. Well, all the material is removed. The surfaces are terrible, of course, because I'm using a roughing bit, but that's to be expected. But what's cool again is the chip size. These are just tiny chunks. And if I would use the brushes when I'm not filming, then this stuff is really easy to suck up for the dust collector. Now this is also done and if you compare them side by side, this was cut with just the spiral upcut six millimeter bit and this with the eight millimeter compression bit. There's still a little bit of fuzzy edges on the top. The bit is no miracle, but it's a lot better than on this one. 
in terms of surface finish, both are really nice, basically identical. So achieving this kind of surface finish means that the cut settings are somewhat good and the bits are sharp. Another way to judge if your tool is sharp is by looking at the shavings it produces. So I saved eight different kind of shavings from the test cuts and the most important part first is all of these are shavings. None of this is just purely dust. Even the ones from the smallest step over and chip load. What you can also pretty clearly see is how the chips get thicker with increasing chip load and of course that's to be expected. This is the amount of chips that the 6 and 8 mm bit tests produced. One full bucket, quite extreme. So the 6 and 8 mm bits didn't push the power limit of the spindle at all, but rather the stiffness limit. And I can think of two reasons why that is. The first reason I think is because of the arrangement of the bearings in here. So as far as I know, there are two bearings down here somewhere that have to take all the load from the cutting. And then there's a third bearing up here that just supports the end of the rotor inside here. And as you can see, I can flex this whole plastic cover up here. So I don't think it's designed up here to take any more loads from cutting. And with only the load bearings down here, this close together, that just doesn't provide a lot of stiffness. The second reason I think is because of the way the spindle is mounted to the Z-axis. As you can see, it's not directly bolted to the Z-axis plate here, but with these two brackets to the lower edge. And that's just terrible for stiffness. And would be so simple to fix with just a spacer and a bolt through the Z-axis plate into this piece. But this then would interfere with this cover, but I don't understand at all why there's a cover right there. I know that if you have the bigger spindle, then this is mounted to the Z-axis plate right about here and also a connection up here. And then there's a big slot in this cover, so why not the same for this configuration? So now next I will make test cuts with this flattening bit and this hopefully then shows the power limits of the spindle. I'm pretty sure this will make a huge mess, so let's go for it. In these tests I pushed the cut settings until the spindle started to blink because it indicates when it's drawing too much current. Well the test with a low RPM just got interrupted by the spindle. I only let it turn about 4500 RPM which is almost as slow as it can but its own overcurrent protection triggered and stopped the spindle. So yeah, the low RPM is not too good for flattening. With higher RPM it went much better. All right, now I'm done with the flattening test as well. And here is the big mess, as expected. Floor full of chips, the computer full of chips. Nah, now it's time to clean up. The surface finish I get from this bit is basically flawless, no matter what settings I tested. Even the most aggressive settings, there the surface still is quite shiny actually. Pretty amazing. And I've had this bit for a lot longer and still used the first cutting edges of the inserts and it's still very sharp. So with four cutting edges available this will last a very long time. And these are the normal carbide inserts. But then these inserts also exist with the diamond coating as the other bits I tested. And with these Fraser told me that this bit then is also capable of cutting aluminium. But I don't really want to try that without having a full enclosure around the CNC router. So yeah, these exist, but I haven't used them so far since the standard ones are still perfectly fine. The results from flattening are now also integrated into the other cut settings. And if I filter for only the flattening bit, there are only these results. And there's this column called overload and to use them you basically deselect the ones which means the spindle is overloaded and then you get all the results and cut settings that the spindle can handle. Here the results are quite a bit more interesting. I plotted the spindle power over the RPM and you can clearly see that in the low RPM it only has about 200 watts of power 
and it grows fairly linear and reaches its max 1000 watts at about 20,000 RPM. I guess it's a bit higher, but somewhere in this range. And it also makes sense that it behaves that way, because the cooling fan only spins as fast as the router bit does. So the spindle has to limit its power output to something that the cooling fan is capable of cooling away. And in the low RPM, that seems like not be more than 200 watts. And therefore it rises when the spindle spins faster. Now are these bits only for a CNC router? Of course not. It's a carbide tool and if it spins fast enough, it will cut wood no matter what. So here's an example of using it on a router table. You definitely can plunge really nicely with these bits. The bits can also perfectly be used with jigs. This for example is the pantry router cutting a joint at full depth with the 8mm bit. As a conclusion, I can only say I like all of these bits and also especially the flattening one that I had before. They perform really nicely and it's safe to say that they outperformed my CNC router, so unfortunately I couldn't test their full potential, but that's okay. So from now on they will be my workhorses for everything that requires a router bit like this. Two more things, one good for me, one good for you. If you're interested in one of these bits and want to buy one, you can do that through the links I've provided in the video description. And if you do so, I will get a few bucks off of your purchase without you paying more for the router bits, just like every other affiliate link. And good for you is that I will provide all the results and cutting data from all my testing for you for free to download in the video description. And I hope you can get something out of that and make good use of that. And finally the giveaway. To enter it, just make a comment with the information that you got from the two hints during the video. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed all of that. Thanks for watching. So the 8 and 6 millimeter bits didn't ignore the random blue screen of the computer in the background. Uh, why?